The heroic story of two mustaches attached to meat bags saving a room <laughs> plane full of people. Mustaches. The Sully story. I just want to point out the camera's kind of... Oh, hold on. Yeah, yeah I can fix that. Uh, there we go. There's, there's Mark with his mustache. Okay. Our beards and mustaches will save this review. I like geriatric Tom Hanks. Ger uh, well, he wasn't geriatric. I mean, he was... Well, older. no, I can tell they made him look a bit older for this. Oh, no, they made him look older because the act, yeah. the car the person is older, but um, I wouldn't No, call that's it. the reason I like Jerry Ashley. Yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go so far as... Because we actually saw the guy who, at the end of the credits, Sully, uh, I wouldn't call him Jerry Ashley. He's definitely always probably in his 60s or 70s, but... Uh, or, or late 50s. Yeah, you're going to you know, check it now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I I I was going to pull up something else oh, yeah. for my own. But, uh, yeah, Sully, this true story that apparently me and Mark knew actually nothing about that took place in 2009 where Sullenberger, which that's an I could have sworn that it took place it in, like, the 90s. Yeah, it did. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's your hazard life. I have a mistake. Oh. Uh, yeah. I was wondering what the <laughs> fuck that was. <laughs> um... Yeah, um, yeah, I didn't know about much about this either. It was 2009. That's only well, seven years ago. Still a ways off, but uh, yeah, that was only around seven years ago. I mean, I was 19. You were uh, 18. So yeah, you'd think we would have heard about it. I guess we were just too busy wrapped up in our own shit at the time. Um, no, but he. It's the story of Sully uh, Sullenberger, who, along with his co-pilot, his first officer, um, landed the plane on the Hudson. And all the scrutiny he got for it. And the, the movie did a good job of, uh, first off, the movie is really good. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a Clint Eastwood movie. He, Clint Eastwood can be hit or miss. Generally, I like him as a director a lot. Uh, and he did a great job with this film. He does a real good uh, um, job at, really, there's no bad guy in this. Every It's everyone just doing their jobs from the, how did we refer to those two who were... Kind of analyzing what happened, all the scenarios. Oh, there was a whole committee. Just only yeah, a two committee. of them ever said yeah. anything, and one well, of them three. was just the woman said something too. <laughs> no, it was the woman, the bald dude, and then, and the, then uh, the other white guy. Yeah, so would three occasionally of them say something, but he was mostly facial emotions. <laughs> from, from, from. Then the black guy who looks like the uh, sergeant from. Uh, oh, die Hard? was it? No, Sorry. not Die Hard. Um, um it was. It's that show that's on air uh, that's about a police force in New York. Oh. It's that comedy. Oh, characters. oh, um, uh, Sirens. That one? No. Oh, no, no, the other one. I know which one you're talking about. Um, I can't remember. Damn it, I can't. Terry Jones is kind of, I think, is on that show, but I can't remember exactly the name of the show. You mean Terry Crews? Terry Crews, sorry. <laughs> Terry Jones is a different guy. Uh, point being, yeah, um, they do a good job of painting the humanity of the entire situation. The um, the fact that there really is no villain in the movie. There, there shouldn't be a villain in the movie anyway. The price of all this attention, how one man can be called a hero but not see himself as a hero and make it understandable why he wouldn't. It's just, well, would you just... Oh, no, I, I, I have been looking at something up because this has been sitting on my mind the entire movie. Oh. Um, uh, it's not coming up. Basically, a bit from American Dad, where he's telling Steve, oh, I'm going to have a hero's brunch. Captain Sullivan's going to be there. I invited him. <laughs> I do remember that. I do remember that. Um, but no, all the acting is fantastic. Tom Cruise... I won't be surprised if he gets another Oscar nod this year. I said it again, didn't it? Tom Hanks. Wow, I'm... You are just mixing up your I actors. I am off today. Tom Cruise fighting a... Tom Cruise! Wait, wait. Tom, Tom Cruise fighting, fighting a flock of geese you know, and he can't save the plane. You know what I think it was? <laughs> the, Tom Cruise. Is the Rob Lowe roast. Yeah, that Rob Lowe roast just... Oh, you're great in Edge of Tomorrow. Oh, no, that's Tom, that was Tom Did Cruise. Did you actually watch that, by the way? I started watching oh, it. Oh, God. Didn't get much they into cut. It. If you get, haven't watched it, watch The Roast of Rob Lowe. <laughs> they cut deep in that one. Back <laughs> to Sully, though. Um, yeah, uh, Tom Hanks. The movie doesn't work if it's not for Tom Hanks. And Tom Hanks, I won't be surprised if he gets another Oscar nod this year. It was a really good movie. It was. It reminded me of the 90s when we got a lot more of these uh, actual, like, human movies. A little where bit there's of like no, a like, 
big bad guy. It's got a little there's... bit of a disaster feel to it, sort of. A little. A little bit, but... Like, that's yes. mostly from the camera shots. Yeah. And they add in special effects here and there. <laughs> Sorry. But for the most part, <laughs> it's, you know, just the story. Yeah, it's the story. Of this guy. And it works really well. It's really nicely done. Um, just, it reminded me of the 90s, because nowadays, mostly what we get, usually... Are these movies where if they try and be human, they go over the top? Well, when you like mean, Sully would be like, "No, I can't let these people down." Well, you mentioned uh, that. No, there was something else I was going to mention, but um, I mentioned this to you in the hallway uh, when we got out. That with everything that's been going on this year, from terrorism, global warming, hate, the horrible hate, the, the elections. God, forbid, oh God, it's horrible. But with all that, when we see the ugliest humanity, it's actually really nice and almost uplifting to actually see how good of people we can be yeah. in our, in the world and it, it makes you feel good it's but also got me in the mood for like winter a little bit yeah just a like those nice kind of <laughs> stale winter months where it's not like you know it's not snowing every other insanely day insanely cold but it's kind of cold. The sun's out. Yeah, what Everything if, has that, like, crisp feel to it. They, oh, no. They said the wind chill was negative 5 and the wire was 36 degrees in the Hudson. Made me really want to, like, bundle up a little bit. I mm. like I like the colder months because mm. I can wear more clothing that's true. and it's comfy. That's, what, that's true. That's a good thing about the cold months, folks. You can always put on more layers. You can only take off so much. Um, but, uh... No, if you think I, I leaned over to him when he said uh, forty-two, it's like I've been flying for forty-two years. That's weird because he's four, he's forty-three years old, and I leaned over and was like, "That's so weird," because he's thirty-nine. <laughs> oh, I think he was born in uh, nineteen fifty-one. Fifty-one. That would put him at let's see, forty-nine. Then he was obviously flying around. I think the era of Vietnam or something, or a little afterwards. Uh, that would mean he'd be about sixty-seven today, or sixty-six. Mm. So scale it back. When this happened, he was a, he was just in his fifty, you know, g g going into his sixties when this happened. Fifty eight, fifty nine, roughly around there. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing that I had to, I kind of laughed internally when I was watching this. But when it's played out in the movie, it's really kind of screwing with screwing with him. When he's visual having all these visions about the plane possibly hitting the city. My mind immediately went to freaking Nick Cage and the Wicker Man with the truck just, meh, meh, just the truck coming out of nowhere. Oh, I, that's, I'm horrible for that. I know. Uh, uh, I don't know. I like the movie. No, I think it's I, really good. I like the different angles it took. Because honestly, this seems like the kind of movie where, with a lot of directors, mm. it will have just been. Let's try and stretch this yeah. out, add in, like, romance plot, everything else. And, you know, instead of doing that, beginning of the movie is the disaster. Yeah. Like, thunk. Well, and the, I heard mentioned uh, when, uh, when I saw another short review, no spoil, I didn't get spoiled by it at all. Because, believe it or not, I don't think either of us actually knew how this ended for Sullivan. I knew everyone survived. Yeah, me. everyone survived, but we did, I didn't know if they were going to, like, crucify him at their hearing or whatever, and they didn't. Oh, no, they, they, he was still a hero. And yeah, I every, yeah, that. and then I do love the fact that when... The, Hence, the, he got invited to the hero. Mm, and the, end, the ending just kind of is perfect the way it is. Just when they finally do the simulations, and then Hanks explains why the simulations aren't correct and then they adjust how it. many times <laughs> did they practice this yes. uh, and then um 17. they practice no 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 <laughs> that was going to one oh of yeah the that's right one uh yeah and how many the other ones yeah no so uh we'll give you 35 seconds he's like look we had 128 208 seconds up there i'll take 35 <laughs> and then wouldn't you know it they're all nope can't do it they can't make it like, after two simulations, like, do we uh, need to see any other simulations? Uh, no. No, we don't. <laughs> just It was just a great feeling to know that, no, this man was right. I, I do have to say, though, I like the simulation program and mm. everything else, but it gave me a weird feeling. When they were doing the simulation, basically the camera angle is sitting, like, right back mm. here. And it's looking forward, and you see the back of these people's heads, 
and the computer screens in front of them. Which is how a lot of really bad B-movies do it <laughs> when they're playing. So, I'm getting deja vu to all these really bad B-movies because these are 2009 simulator graphics. Mm. Which, you know, simulators, very technical, but not usually huge on the graphics. No, they're, they're basic so, graphics. They're sitting there. A little and specifically when... One of the people in the cockpit, and this happens each time they, so they yep. show the simulation, goes, birds! Oh, that's right. Birds! I They say <laughs> it like a robot. Like a robot. They're just like, birds. Yep. <laughs> okay. Everything is failing. Oh, oh. we made it. Uh, birds! <laughs> birds. Uh, My God. Uh, uh, they did a real... Eastwood did a real good job with the directing, particularly in the fact that we are constantly we're well not constantly but we cut back to be prior to the event during the event and be, but we start after the event but it's not jumbled and it's not oh, yeah. messy or anything it's no, done it's very really clear yeah it was very clear it's kind of like how Deadpool, <clears throat> it's better than Deadpool because it's Eastwood I'd say but yeah. Deadpool will also jump back and forth that's a weird comparison for me to make Sully and Deadpool but I do have to say um that uh Clint Eastwood is not a bug is not above plugging himself <laughs> because <laughs> at one point Captain Sullivan is going for a jog in uh, Times Square. Yep, and then we see and Green you Green see Green in the Star. background on one of the buildings that's like iconic for having movie posters yeah. up there. I don't know if it's poster like uh, a I don't know if it's TV actual, display I don't, or something. I can't ever remember. But Grand Torino is up there <laughs> with Clint Eastwood movie. staring at you like this. <laughs> Why, Sully, it's a good movie. <laughs> I know, this was really good. No, it is. I can't think, I don't think I had any actual I, issues with it. I like seeing it. Tom Hanks again. Yeah, it, it was a short movie. It's only an hour and a <clears> half. Um, so, I, I didn't even realize it was that short. Yeah, well, and it's 96 minutes, but hour and a half round down. Um, yeah, I can't think, I don't think I had any issues with it. Um, I don't know. Those, those, uh... Those graphics of the geese. <laughs> oh, no. no. I can't even. The graphics of really quick flying geese into the engine. Ah! <laughs> I I do have Being to say, though. Being with feathers and bones. I, I would be kind of curious. Part of me just has that, like, instinct to, when this comes out on DVD, watch through that scene where the plane is hitting the geese, Put it in slow motion and see what the geese actually look like. And if an animator tried to slip something in there mm. as a joke, because <laughs> I could see it. Ah, uh, yeah, I could possibly see it, like you would with a plane going. Jesus, uh, how fast were they going? I know they. Uh, I can't remember. I the height, I, I exactly. know it was over. It was a little under three hundred knots. Mm. I can't remember. How much knots is in miles? Yeah, because knots. It was really fucking fast. Yeah, now. and then you're talking you're talking about a what is it, like a hundred ton vehicle or something like that. Uh, I don't know how much a freaking. Uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm curious now how knots um translate converts miles. to miles. Oh, yeah. Well, um, I, I mean there was a I can't I would say I noticed the CGI like when the plane. Because they show the plane landing from several angles, and one angle I could kind of see that this <coughs> was CGI, but it was me really trying to focus on it, so I wasn't really paying it that much mind. The only time CGI is ever really, really used, apart from probably some like background landscape shots, is um, in the cockpit. And... 250 knots, mm -hmm. if we're going with that, equals... 287 miles per hour. Point six. <laughs> Nine, four, eight, two, two, whatever. Round up to seven. Um, yeah, that's pretty fast for a, again, how much does a, a jet like that probably weigh? Uh, I don't know, but it instantly highlighted a problem that I think a lot of people have kind of pointed out about a lot of these passenger jets. Yeah. Is when the engines go... They're not very good at gliding. No, because it's a freaking beast of a machine. <laughs> like, you you get military aircraft and a bunch of crap like that. Those things that the engine goes on, 
It could glide for Well, they even showed that legs. in the movie, too, at one point, where Hanks was <coughs> in the military, and uh, he, they must have been testing a jet, and not necessarily the engine went, but something hydraulics. went... Hydraulics. Hydraulics went in the engine and the plane, Basically, so the whole thing was kind of... Is wobbling, wobbling, and the only way he could keep it stable was to keep going faster before he landed. Yeah. So, yeah, they showed that he was capable of, you know, analyzing these things early on. Um, I'm trying to think if I could, could have figured out anything I felt... I can't think of anything I saw wrong with the film. Uh, I mean, nope. Hanks was great. I loved Eckhart. I, I, despite how good Hanks is, I actually don't think Hanks works as well without having Eckhart next to him. Oh, yeah. They, they, those two worked great on I, each other. I think that was a great combination mm. there. And I love how pilots always have those bushy mustaches. Yep, and Eckhart actually gets a couple um, of the nice little quips in in the movie. That being said, one of the scenes that I can very much see this actually happening, mm. but I found a little weird was the scene where he goes into a bar in New York. That, yeah. And I'm kind of sitting there, I'm like, this this seems kind of awkward and like... Yo, no, we made a drink but, after you! <clears throat> the Grey Goose and a splash of water! And I'm like... This is in terrible uh, taste. It's horribly insensitive! Because I don't know if you're being like... No, it serious. was the other guys in the bar yeah. who, I swear one of them looks like oh i can't remember his name i think he's on cnn he's like one of the reporters <laughs> with like gray hair and kind of a oh, bigger him. nose yeah. not wolf blitz no i don't know who you're talking about but i know the guy in the movie you're talking about yeah <laughs> mm. also they 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 dug up uh david Lerman. oh yeah they dug up later the, from the grave apparently uh is he dead oh wait actually you got your phone. David Look at David Letterman. Dead. Yeah, just I, maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking uh, someone else, but yeah, maybe no. De maybe David Letterman's not dead. Uh, yeah, I think he just retired. That yeah, you know what? That might be it. I know Letterman definitely retired. I don't know if he died. Uh, is David Letterman alive? And the correct answer is. Uh, ba do Born. Yeah, yeah he's still alive. Okay. Yeah, I don't so think yeah, he's alive. obviously Letterman has no issue guest starring or cameoing for movies. I guess it's just another thing. I'm retired. Hey, check. Okay. Where David Letterman probably has made so much money he doesn't need to do anything ever oh, again. Yeah. Um, I just want to say because I can tell we're quickly winding down with this. Yeah, we don't we have don't, much else. We don't have a lot to say. No, because it wasn't a bad movie. Nope. It wasn't an action movie. Nope. It wasn't a comedy where nope. we can sit there and talk about it forever. No. It was just all around a good movie. Good to movie, where, good personal Like, story. the only way I could see about stretching us out talking about it is if we sit here and basically run through parts of the movie being like, well, you see, you're there if we knew more <laughs> about flying. Wait a minute, wait. Now you see here, what you got here is the scene, boom, over here. With your other scene going, boom, now they go inside in the... Or if we knew more about piloting. Yeah, uh, aeronautics. Yeah, they Damn it, have. if only Captain Sully had been driving a truck. <laughs> then well, I could have You could have gone all night, baby. Um, but, yeah, yeah, we don't got much else to say. Would I give this movie a 10? I mean, just because I don't see anything <clears throat> wrong with the movie doesn't necessarily mean it's a 10 out of 10. You know what? Given for the fact that it's a really nice movie, I could see just watching I'd probably go with about a 9. I, I, I think I would actually go with a 10. Really? Because we haven't seen a movie like this in a long time. It did a really good job. I And I enjoyed it a lot. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll probably go about a 9. Uh, if anything, I mean, I love the... I do like the ending a lot. It did just cut right there at the end, though. So that might... I wouldn't call that... That's a nitpick, but it is something. Like, that's a really sudden ending. But Whatever. Uh, trailers, we got the accountant again. That's I would like to say, oh. before we go further into trailers, I don't care about the accountant. We've talked about that one already. Eh. All right. No. Oscar bait. Oh, yeah. They were trying, like, don't get me wrong. Cam Sully, I think, is a good movie, and we'll probably get a couple Oscars. Or at least a couple Oscar nuts. Rest of these trailers, a good chunk of them, Oscar. Please give us an Oscar. Now, that being said, Oscar made... We have... They went out of their way for one of them to every big-name actor. They went, this person, Oscar nominee. This person, yeah. Oscar award winner. 
Now that being said, let's let's be fair. Oscar baiting doesn't necessarily mean bad movie. It just means that they, it looks like they're trying to go for the Oscar. It looks like my fear is some of these movies try a little too hard yeah. to be like we should get an Oscar. What was it like? Lay Miz actually added a song in for best original song. Shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we'll move on from the account. The account actually doesn't look bad. We'll probably end up seeing it if we get the chance. Uh, we have Loving with uh, Joel Edgerton. I don't know the, uh, the actress's name. About the interracial couple in, uh, I think, oh. Louisiana. Um, I think it was Louisiana. Um, it was southern, some southern state. Some really racist southern state. Uh, back when they were all really racist. Uh, I, was that the one you said Oscar bait the sequel or something like that? Or Oscar baiting 2? Because I know Collateral Beauty is a love. Collateral Love's the one you first said Oscar bait on. Wait, what were the other movies? A Collateral Love, Manchester by the Sea. That was the other one. Manchester by the Sea. No, that was the other one. Loving, you said. I think, is just it's a decent like a nice movie, film. decent story, stuff like that. Um, Telling me, me tell events. The Court? Yeah, tell like, me I love my wife. granted, I will say, however, one thing is um, this is kind of continuing something. I forget what comedian it was making fun of this, but. Um, the guilting of white people. Oh, God, yeah. Where, you know, the white we guilt. had Django Unchained. <laughs> then we 12 had, Years uh, a Slave. 12 Years a Slave. Oh, uh, oh, um, the one, both Mandela, uh, both Mandela and, uh, cause, uh, oh, he just Elba played him. He's from yeah. Luther. Uh, then there was the one where it was, um, no, we had the one about Martin Luther. Yeah, King. I can't remember that one. Selma. Selma, that was it. We had Selma. Uh, Free State of Jones came out this year. Now we got this. I don't know about Free State of Jones. I haven't seen that. I heard it, uh, it didn't do well. Um, <laughs> that being said, now we have this about to come out. And why are we racist at this point? Because really, people, old-timey views have been still in- integrated and all that shit. Um, Collateral Love. That was the one he first said Oscar being. Will Smith plays a guy who lost his daughter and as a therapeutic he, way. He, was he apparently writes a, letters to, to time, time, love, and death. Love, death. And they appear. The universe. <laughs> and they I'm appear. I'm pretty be- sure one of them is played by one of his kids. Uh, I don't know about time. Um, maybe. Maybe that's... I'm I pretty I sure that's death is played by one of that's his Helen kids. That's Helen Mirren. You're going to really call Helen Mirren Will Smith's child? I'm pretty sure Will Smith is a time traveler at this <laughs> point. And then uh, Carrie Knightley plays Love. And essentially them trying to get him back from, apparently, obviously, his daughter's death. Uh, and it's basically him coming back to the world. And yes, it's Oscar baiting. Yes, it looks kind of cheesy. But at the same time... That's the one where they went so-and-so. So and so, yeah, Oscar award winner. And but at the same so time, so. I gotta say, two time Oscar award winner. It's actually an interesting concept that I don't mind. I have to say, the one that threw me off though, is they're going through all of the actors that, like all the main cast that you see, and they're like so and so awards nominated for so and so awards. <laughs> then they had that one guy <laughs> not nominated. Michael Pe- Pena. Michael Pena. That was. <laughs> Ah, uh, Michael I Pena. Felt bad. Michael Pena. You like Michael Pena, don't you? I mean, Michael Pena. Um, to be fair, I don't think it looks that bad. It's actually a concept I don't mind. It doesn't look bad. And well, I, you know what? A part of it is, I mean, from my understanding, he was really good in Concussion. He did not get nominated for Concussion. Some people think he was snubbed. And this is him back in a vengeance, be like, I'm Will Motherfucking Smith. I can get an Oscar if I want. Uh. Anyway, Manchester by the Sea, uh, Casey Affleck. Oscar baiting too. <laughs> the Oscar. The <laughs> Oscar. Uh, Casey Affleck is basically has to take care of his younger brother. Yeah, their dad died, and the dad uh, left the older brother as the legal guardian of the younger it's brother. It's him trying to deal with that. The older no brother is j- like I get the impression disconnected from the family yeah. to some degree, and from obviously his ex or something like that, and reconciliation, and whatnot, and lots of Bunch tears of and all that. Yeah. Uh, then uh, just two others. We got Rules Don't Apply, the Howard Hughes movie. That looks cool. Uh, yeah. I want to check that. And then Edge of Seventeen, which <laughs> this was. This is the slightly edited version of this the was the ed version because she didn't say fuck once or t- and they. 
cut, yeah, they cut out tit. <laughs> I want you to lick my uh, and do me in the. <laughs> Say something! I think you need to avoid run-on sentences. <laughs> Yet, in the regular version, she's yeah. like, Fucking say something! <laughs> but I, and I realized what it was, because we saw Morgan last week, which is where we got the trailer, but it was, uh, our Mor Morgan's an R-rated movie where Sully's a PG-13. That's why I guess they allowed the R-rated version of the trailer. Uh, still, that thing... You can get away with saying one fuck in a PG-13. Yeah, in a PG... They did! Uh, in Sully, uh, when they're when both him and Eckhart um, go off for that jog at the night and say, "Oh, it's cold." It's like, "You want to run? Yeah, let's run." <sighs> Fuck, it's cold. <laughs> I think you might have. Did you walk out for that? No, I was uh, there. Uh, yeah, maybe you just they just went. Uh, maybe you missed it, but uh, yeah, that's when. He's, no, that's what I mean is for the trailer. Oh, for the trailer? No, yeah. in the trailers, no. You can't. Uh, you don't. They don't allow f bombs in the trailers unless it's either Red Band or in the a case of Morgan it was an R rated movie. Oh. I yeah. thought they would have if it was a PG-13 trailer for a PG-13 movie. No, because the rule for PG-13, and it's, there's a whole thing. I'm not an expert. As much as yeah. I have a lot of movie knowledge, this is not something I'm an expert on. The rules for a PG, I think you can get away with the word shit in PG, I think, once or twice. PG-13, you can pretty much get away with anything minus the word cunt. And yeah, this is YouTube, so I can say whatever the fuck I want. Um, cunt, you can say fuck once. Uh, you might be able to get away with tit, but I don't know about that one. And then but R that's my point, Yeah, is the movie's PG-13, yep. and we're seeing a PG-13 version of the trailer. But also, because you're only allowed one P fuck in a PG-13, because the tr you, you can't Does necessarily... count for the trailer? That's the thing. I don't know if the trailers would count towards that, because you would have... I mean, that being said... 13 and up today don't mean shit for the language barrier, folks. So I don't know what the... 13-year-olds are watching Game of Thrones with nudity, rape, massacring, bloodshed. You might need to adjust your standards a little bit. <laughs> Just saying. Um, but I understand. A lot of people will take, like, young kids to PG-13 because it's parental guidance a little bit. So that's why they still do it. It's understandable. Uh, final thoughts. Uh, Sully's really good. If you got a chance to see it, go see it. You like Clint Eastwood, Tom Hanks, and, uh, the true stories about real life people doing incredible things. I recommend it entirely. So 9 out of 10 for me. Uh, you gave it 10 out of 10. Any final yep. thoughts? Not really. It's a good movie. Um, you don't have to see it in theaters. I would also say it would be like a good rental. DVD. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to remember what next week's is going to be. Oh, fuck. It's Blair Witch next week. Alrighty then. Yeah, look, we've got, still got a few moments. So I guess I gotta <clears throat> iterate this. I did an actual video about the woods turning out to be Blair Witch, so you can check that out in the playlist section. Um, I have no interest in seeing the movie, but I may be forced because I know there's a couple other movies that I just don't care about, so that might be the most interesting one to talk about. I mean, hearing really good things about it, even from non horror lovers. I don't give a rat's ass about the Blair Witch. The only time it was given a rat's ass about was when the movie came out originally. Then Book of Shadows wrecked that thing's credibility for about a decade. Now I got this. I'm, I'm just hoping that from the way the trailer looks, it's actually aliens. Because I will laugh my ass off at that twist. I'm like, yay! You jumped the shark! I feel as though that'd be going too far. And that's why I would love it. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time, yep. folks. Have a good night.